I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 138 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. Today we're reading the New Testament book of Mark, chapter 11, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Reformed Cigars, Charles Spurgeon Blue, Maduro, in the Toro 6x56 Vitola. Reformed Cigars doesn't actually have a website yet, um, so all your ordering and uh, things need to be done through their Facebook page or their Instagram page where you can message Al Gomez, who is uh, the head of the ministry, which is a church planting ministry. So all the proceeds from the cigars go directly into the church planting ministry. So if you're so inclined uh, to help them out, please do. And uh, they have Maduro's and Connecticut cigars in Toro and Torpedo sizes, and they've just started a, uh, a new line of organic tobacco, and he sent me a couple of, uh, of samples of those as well. I think there's a Habano and another a Maduro, so I'll put a link to the, uh, the Facebook page in the show notes, and you can go there and message Al, and he will let you know what they have available and how you can order. So let's go ahead and get into this week's reading of the book of Mark, chapter 11. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and verse 1. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. 
When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. And they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it, and were seeking a way to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. And when evening came, they went out of the city. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And Spurgeon comments on verse 24, Everything you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. This text shows us four essential qualities necessary to any great success and prevalence in prayer. First, according to our Savior's description of prayer, there should always be some definite objectives for which we should plead. Jesus spoke of things, Everything you pray and ask for. He did not seem to think that God's children would go to him in prayer when they had nothing to pray for. A second essential qualification of prayer is earnest desire. For the master supposes that when we pray, we have something we ask for. Observe, third, that faith is an essential quality of successful prayer. Believe that you have received it. We cannot pray so as to be heard in heaven and answered to our soul's satisfaction unless we believe God really hears and will answer us. A fourth qualification is that an expectation should always go with a firm faith. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Not merely believe that you will, but believe that you have received it. Count it as if it already were received and act as if it already were received. And back to Mark verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. And they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him, and they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Answer me. And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say, From heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But shall we say, From man? They were afraid of the people, for they all held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And that's the end of today's reading in the book of Mark. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless, and the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. If you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day 
have a great cigar, and God bless.